Imagine carrying a heavy backpack filled with things you no longer need or want. It weighs you down, holds you back, and prevents you from moving forward. This backpack represents our emotional baggage, the hurt, pain, and trauma that we hold on to. In her book, The Power of Letting Go, Pam W. Vredeveld explores the importance of releasing this emotional baggage in order to live a more fulfilling life. In the introduction, Vredeveld highlights the power of letting go and explains how it can help us heal and grow. She encourages readers to embrace the process of letting go and to understand that it is a journey that requires patience, courage, and vulnerability. Drawing on her own experiences as a therapist and grief counselor, Vredeveld provides practical advice and guidance on how to let go of past hurts and move forward. Through her compassionate and insightful writing, Vredeveld reminds us that the power of letting go is within our grasp, and that by doing so, we can find peace, joy, and fulfillment in our lives. Step 1. Ask yourself, why can't I let go? Chapter 1. Explore your core values. The first step to letting go is to explore your core values. This chapter explains that your values are the things that matter most to you in life, such as your relationships, your work, and your hobbies. By identifying your core values, you can determine what is truly important to you and make decisions that align with those values. This can help you let go of things that are not serving you well and focus on the things that bring you joy and fulfillment. To identify your core values, the author suggests asking yourself questions such as what brings me the most joy in life, and what do I want to be remembered for? By reflecting on these questions, you can gain a deeper understanding of what you value most in life and use that knowledge to guide your decision-making. Step 2. Embrace today. Chapter 2. Realize when you're grasping. In this chapter, the author explains that grasping is the act of holding on too tightly to something that is not serving you well. Grasping can take many forms, such as trying to control a situation or holding on to a relationship that is no longer healthy. The author emphasizes that grasping is a natural human tendency, but it can prevent us from experiencing joy and fulfillment in life. To overcome grasping, the author suggests practicing mindfulness and self-awareness. By paying attention to your thoughts and emotions, you can recognize when you are grasping and make a conscious decision to let go. The author also suggests seeking support from friends, family, or a therapist to help you navigate difficult emotions and situations. Chapter 3. Recognize that what is, is. In this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of accepting the present moment for what it is. She explains that many people spend their lives wishing for things to be different, whether it's a different job, a different relationship, or a different body. However, this constant striving can prevent us from experiencing joy and fulfillment in the present moment to let go of the desire for things to be different. The author suggests practicing acceptance and gratitude. By focusing on the good things in your life and accepting the things you cannot change, you can find peace and contentment in the present moment. Chapter 4. Review the Facts In this chapter, the author suggests taking a step back from a difficult situation and reviewing the facts objectively. She explains that our emotions can cloud our judgment and make it difficult to see things clearly. By reviewing the facts, we can gain a more objective perspective and make decisions that are in our best interest. The author suggests writing down the facts of a situation, as well as your emotions and thoughts about the situation. By separating the facts from your emotions and thoughts, you can gain a clearer perspective and make decisions that are more rational and effective. Chapter 5. Remain in the Present In this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of staying present in the moment. She explains that many people spend their lives dwelling on the past or worrying about the future, which can prevent them from experiencing joy and fulfillment in the present moment. To stay present, the author suggests practicing mindfulness and focusing on your senses. By paying attention to your surroundings and your bodily sensations, you can stay grounded in the present moment and enjoy the beauty of life. The author also suggests taking time to appreciate the small things in life, such as a beautiful sunset or a delicious meal. By staying present and savoring the moment, you can find joy and fulfillment in everyday life. Step 3. Connect with God Chapter 6. Relinquish Your Agenda in this chapter, the author explains that letting go requires relinquishing control and surrendering to a higher power. She suggests that trying to control every aspect of our lives can lead to stress and anxiety, and can prevent us from experiencing the beauty and joy of life. To relinquish control, the author suggests practicing surrender in faith. By acknowledging that we cannot control everything and surrendering to a higher power, we can find peace and contentment in the present moment. The author also emphasizes the importance of having faith that things will work out for the best even if they don't go according to our plans. Chapter 7. Run to God 
In this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of turning to God for guidance and support. She explains that prayer and meditation can help us connect with a higher power and find peace and comfort in difficult times. The author suggests making time for daily prayer and meditation, even if it's just a few minutes each day. She also suggests reading spiritual texts and seeking guidance from religious leaders or mentors. By cultivating a deeper spiritual connection, we can find strength and support in difficult times. Chapter 8. Register Your Concerns In this chapter, the author suggests expressing our concerns and emotions in a healthy way. She explains that holding on to negative emotions can prevent us from experiencing joy and fulfillment in life. The author suggests journaling, talking to a trusted friend or therapist, or engaging in creative outlets such as art or music. By expressing our emotions in a healthy way, we can release negative energy and make space for positive emotions. Chapter 9. Relax and Receive In this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of relaxation and self-care. She explains that taking time to rest and recharge can help us let go of stress and anxiety and find peace and contentment in life. The author suggests engaging in relaxation techniques such as deep breathing, meditation, or yoga. She also suggests engaging in activities that bring us joy, such as reading, spending time in nature, or spending time with loved ones. By taking care of ourselves, we can let go of stress and anxiety and find joy and fulfillment in life. Step 4. Be Authentic Chapter 10. Release Your Feelings In this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of releasing our emotions in a healthy way. She explains that holding onto negative emotions can prevent us from experiencing joy and fulfillment in life. The author suggests practicing self-compassion and giving ourselves permission to feel our emotions. She also suggests engaging in healthy outlets for our emotions, such as journaling, talking to a trusted friend or therapist, or engaging in physical activity. By releasing our emotions in a healthy way, we can let go of negative energy and make space for positive emotions. Chapter 11. Reach Out in this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of reaching out for help when we need it. She explains that asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness, and can help us navigate difficult emotions and situations. The author suggests reaching out to friends, family, or a therapist for support. She also suggests joining a support group or engaging in community activities to build connections and find support. By reaching out for help, we can find the strength and support we need to let go of difficult emotions and move forward in life. Before we continue, we would like to inform you that we release these summaries in audio format on Spotify before we release them on YouTube in video format, with subtitles. We have also created a goldmine of information which you can get exclusive access to by supporting us on Patreon. You get in-depth summaries plus scripts, usually twice the length of our YouTube content, a list of the top 20 key takeaways and exercises, summary requests, and more. Thank you for the support and don't forget to hit the like button. Step 5. Give Yourself Grace Chapter 12, Revisit the Basics In this chapter, the author suggests taking a step back and focusing on the basics of self-care. She explains that sometimes, when we are feeling overwhelmed, it can be helpful to focus on simple activities that bring us joy and comfort. The author suggests engaging in activities such as taking a warm bath, drinking a cup of tea, or reading a good book. By focusing on the basics of self-care, we can find comfort and support in difficult times. Chapter 13, Remember in this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of remembering the good things in life. She explains that sometimes, when we are feeling overwhelmed or stressed, it can be helpful to focus on the things we are grateful for. The author suggests making a list of things you are grateful for and reading it regularly. She also suggests taking time to reflect on positive experiences and memories. By focusing on the good things in life, we can find joy and fulfillment even in difficult times. Chapter 14. Reduce Stimulation in this chapter, the author suggests reducing stimulation in our lives to help us find peace and calm. She explains that our modern world is full of distractions and stimuli, which can make it difficult to find inner peace. The author suggests engaging in activities that promote calm, such as meditation or yoga. She also suggests reducing screen time and taking breaks from technology. By reducing stimulation in our lives, we can find peace and calm in the present moment. Chapter 15. Rock with Laughter in this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of laughter in our lives. She explains that laughter can help us let go of stress and find joy and fulfillment in life. The author suggests engaging in activities that promote laughter, such as watching a funny movie or spending time with friends who make us laugh. By finding humor in life, we can let go of stress and find joy in everyday moments. 
Step 6. Acknowledge your anger. Chapter 16. Remember, it's okay to be angry. In this chapter, the author emphasizes that it is okay to feel angry. She explains that anger is a natural human emotion and can serve a useful purpose in our lives. The author suggests acknowledging our anger and expressing it in a healthy way, such as through journaling or talking to a trusted friend. By acknowledging and expressing our anger, we can let go of negative emotions and move forward in a healthy way. Chapter 17. Recognize Your Anger Style in this chapter, the author explains that everyone experiences and expresses anger differently. She suggests that understanding our own anger style can help us manage our emotions more effectively. The author provides examples of different anger styles, such as explosive anger or passive-aggressive behavior. By recognizing our own anger style, we can better understand our emotions and find healthy ways to express and manage our anger. Step 7. Resolve Your Anger Chapter 18. Recite the ABCs of Anger in this chapter, the author suggests using the ABCs of anger as a tool for managing our emotions. The ABCs stand for acknowledge, breathe, and choose. The author suggests acknowledging our emotions and taking deep breaths to calm ourselves down. She also suggests choosing a healthy way to express our anger, such as through exercise or creative outlets. Chapter 19. Remain Calm in this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of remaining calm in difficult situations. She explains that staying calm can help us think more clearly and make better decisions. The author suggests using relaxation techniques, such as deep breathing or meditation, to help us remain calm. She also suggests taking a step back from a difficult situation and assessing it objectively. By remaining calm, we can find clarity and make better decisions. Chapter 20. Resist the Pharisee Syndrome in this chapter, the author explains that the Pharisee syndrome is the tendency to judge others and hold ourselves to impossible standards. She suggests that this mindset can prevent us from letting go of negative emotions and finding peace and fulfillment in life. The author suggests practicing self-compassion and letting go of the need for perfection. She also suggests focusing on the positive qualities of ourselves and others. By resisting the Pharisee syndrome, we can find acceptance and joy in life. Chapter 21. Resolve Unmet Needs in this chapter, the author suggests that unmet needs can be a significant source of pain and frustration in our lives. She encourages readers to identify their unmet needs and find healthy ways to fulfill them. The author suggests seeking support from friends, family, or a therapist to help identify and address unmet needs. She also suggests engaging in self-care activities that promote fulfillment and satisfaction. Chapter 22 Relinquish Control in this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of relinquishing control in our lives. She explains that trying to control everything can be a significant source of stress and anxiety. The author suggests letting go of the need for control and trusting in a higher power or the universe to guide us. She also suggests focusing on the present moment and finding joy and fulfillment in life as it is. Chapter 23 Rule Out Burnout In this chapter, the author discusses burnout and the importance of preventing it. She explains that burnout can be a significant source of stress and can lead to physical and emotional health problems. The author suggests taking steps to prevent burnout, such as setting healthy boundaries, engaging in self-care activities, and taking breaks when needed. By preventing burnout, we can find balance and fulfillment in our lives. Step 8. Release those who have hurt you. Chapter 24. Request the Gift of Faith. In this chapter, the author suggests that faith can be a powerful tool for finding peace and letting go of negative emotions. She encourages readers to seek out faith and spirituality to help them navigate difficult times. The author suggests engaging in activities such as prayer or meditation to help connect with a higher power. She also suggests seeking out spiritual guidance or attending religious services. Chapter 25. Respond to God's Voice in this chapter, the author discusses the importance of listening to God's voice in our lives. She explains that God can provide guidance and support when we need it most. The author suggests taking time to pray or meditate and listening for God's guidance. She also suggests seeking out spiritual mentors or attending religious services. Chapter 26. Renounce Replays and Revenge In this chapter, the author suggests letting go of negative emotions such as replaying past events or seeking revenge. She explains that holding on to these negative emotions can prevent us from finding peace and fulfillment in life. The author suggests engaging in activities that promote forgiveness and letting go of negative emotions. She also suggests seeking support from friends, family, or a therapist to help process difficult emotions. Step 9. Prepare for your tomorrows Chapter 27. Revise Expectations 
In this chapter, the author suggests revising our expectations to help us find peace and fulfillment in life. She explains that unrealistic expectations can be a significant source of stress and disappointment. The author suggests examining our expectations and adjusting them to be more realistic. She also suggests focusing on the present moment and finding joy and fulfillment in life as it is. Chapter 28. Refuse to Assume the Worst In this chapter, the author suggests avoiding negative thinking patterns such as assuming the worst. She explains that these thought patterns can be a significant source of stress and anxiety. The author suggests challenging negative thoughts and reframing them in a more positive light. She also suggests engaging in activities that promote positivity, such as gratitude journaling or focusing on positive affirmations. Chapter 29. Require a Plan In this chapter, the author emphasizes the importance of having a plan to achieve our goals and find fulfillment in life. She explains that having a plan can help us stay motivated and focused. The author suggests setting specific, measurable goals and breaking them down into smaller steps. She also suggests seeking support from friends, family, or a therapist to help create and implement a plan. Chapter 30 Reassure Yourself In this chapter, the author suggests the importance of reassuring ourselves and acknowledging our own strengths and accomplishments. She explains that self-doubt and negative self-talk can be a significant source of stress and anxiety. The author suggests engaging in activities that promote self-compassion and self-love, such as positive self-talk or affirmation. She also suggests seeking support from friends, family, or a therapist to help build self-esteem and confidence. Step 10. Step into a life of freedom. Chapter 31. Refocus. In this chapter, the author suggests that sometimes, we may lose focus on our goals and values due to life's challenges and distractions. She encourages readers to refocus their attention and energy on what truly matters to them. The author suggests engaging in activities that promote clarity and focus, such as meditation or journaling. She also suggests setting specific, measurable goals and breaking them down into smaller steps to help achieve them. Chapter 32. Rest in God in the final chapter of the book, the author emphasizes the importance of finding rest and peace in God. She explains that letting go of control and trusting in a higher power can be a powerful tool for finding peace and fulfillment in life. The author suggests engaging in activities such as prayer or meditation to help connect with a higher power. She also suggests seeking out spiritual mentors or attending religious services to deepen one's relationship with God. In conclusion, the author emphasizes that letting go is a journey that requires ongoing effort and self-reflection. By applying the lessons learned throughout the book and seeking support from others, we can find peace, joy, and purpose in our lives. Conclusion The Power of Letting Go In the conclusion of the book, the author summarizes the key lessons learned throughout the book and emphasizes the importance of letting go in finding peace, joy, and purpose in life. The author encourages readers to continue to engage in self-care activities, seek support from others, and stay focused on their goals and values. She reminds readers that letting go is an ongoing journey that requires constant effort and self-reflection. The author also emphasizes the importance of forgiveness and releasing negative emotions towards others. She explains that holding on to anger and resentment can be a significant source of stress and anxiety and can hinder our ability to find peace and happiness. Finally, the author suggests that finding peace and fulfillment in life requires letting go of control and trusting in a higher power. She encourages readers to deepen their spiritual practices and connect with a higher power to find rest and peace. In conclusion, the author offers a message of hope and encouragement to readers, reminding them that by letting go of negative emotions and focusing on what truly matters, they can find the power to live a life of freedom and fulfillment.